I, like many people, am a fan of Apple. I have an iPhone, AirPods, Apple Watch, MacBook Pro. I love the simple and sexy design, technology, and interfaces that they create. But one of the other reasons I'm a big fan of theirs is their branding, more specifically, their ads. They have made fantastic ads throughout their entire history, starting from the very beginning with their famous 1984 ad with the sledgehammer, coming to more recent times with the Apple versus PC ads, and even more recently, the new AirPod ad with the big dancers swirling through the air, and the Apple Watch, Apple Music ad, which has the skateboarder kind of flowing effortlessly, stopping time in the train station. Now, there's something that brings many of these ads together, especially the last two that I mentioned. It's movement. It's a sense of time. It's a sense of freedom. Apple really wants you to understand what it feels like to live in the Apple ecosystem, and they've locked into this idea of dance as a way of showing this. They don't need to speak. They can just use a body moving through space, manipulating it sometimes through special effects, time remapping, things like that, that they're really, really good at utilizing dance. And so today, I'm gonna to talk about the most recent ad which exemplifies this. This is the HomePod ad, which has recently gone viral, made by Spike Jones, FKA Twigs, and the choreographer, Ryan Heffington, who isn't credited anywhere, and we'll talk about that later. This video is gonna be all about why I think, from my perspective as a choreographer, this video is so good and so well made. There's a lot of simple, subtle techniques going on here that I think make this video special, and so we're gonna watch the video together, and we're gonna talk about them. Got the AirPods in, and we're about ready to go. Now there's a bunch of different major themes and elements and choreographic strategies at play here that I'm gonna be throwing out as we watch this video because a lot's happening all the time. I want us to be thinking about first how story and how the dance is set up. We're gonna talk about that. Then we're also gonna talk about the way this video is edited and the shots and how we're able to actually see the full frame of FK Twigs' body, which is not normal for uh, modern music videos and dance film. And then we're also just gonna talk about the general playfulness, her performance, um, and how the video just kind of gets us really excited. Let's start with element number one. Before I hit play, I want you to be paying attention in the very beginning of this video to the color, to FKA Twigs' attitude, um, and the sense of space as we start these first few scene establishing shots. Here we go. Right, so we first have a crowded subway. Very dark, dull colors, FKAs, morose. Again, dark, crowded, busy street. Now, dark, crowded elevator, cramped. She isn't able to even move out of this elevator, right? She's stuck here inside. She comes into her apartment. It's dark. Now, check out her body language here. There's a really constrained quality to her movement. You know, it looks just simple. It's pedestrian, dropping things weighted. She's very weighted in the ground. She has all these bags. You can't even count how many bags she seems to have on her. Then she asks Siri for help. She asks the product to bring her something happy. Now I'm going to pause it here for the next things we're going to pay attention to. So we're going to start paying attention to her body a little bit more now. Watch the stillness in these next shots. We were just set up with the darkness of the world, and now we're gonna see the stillness in her body before the explosion of the dance. Not moving here. Not moving here. Subtle sway. Not moving here. Now watch the glass. The glass is gonna be the first thing that moves. Oh, she's learning from the glass. Oh, maybe there's something beyond this world, right? There can be some movement in my life. It then bleeds into her body. And now, whoa, this is the moment. Okay, I'm gonna pause. I know we just got excited. So, something I just wanna lay out is that in choreography, you often really wanna start with a one subtle pedestrian movement that can become huge in dance. If you go back and watch musical theater or watch things on screen, the best dances kind of emerge out of nowhere, right? They take you by surprise. It's not people suddenly in perfect unison harmony dancing, huge moves. It's I'm walking down the street and like this move kind of gets me on my back and then that becomes bigger and kind of I grow. This leads me to another point I wanna make 
which is how this video is really deeply referencing classical musical cinema and Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. These are masters of their craft that understood how to take really basic movement and make it special, right? To just have singing in the rain, right? I'm walking down the street, it's raining, and suddenly a masterful dance is created. And the camera work is really special too and something we don't really have anymore. If you've seen a dance video today, most likely on Instagram, you've seen those videos where the camera is kind of roving side to side and kind of pushing in and pushing out. That's the contemporary technique that's been adopted today because it kind of draws the view where it's constantly moving, right? It keeps us interested and doesn't make us swipe away from that Instagram. But in these classic movie musicals, the camera is a partner to the dancer. It doesn't move unless the dancer beckons it to move or unless the dancer counters, the camera then counters with it. We're seeing that a lot here in this video. We're also seeing the dancer's full body and that's not normal as well for modern music videos or even dance film. Dance film or screen dance as it's known is a genre of dance on the screen, uh, but it's really carefully thinking about how can we show dance best through the camera, right? If we're gonna see something live, we can see everyone's full body and we have kind of an open, big perspective. So if we have this camera, we have these amazing lenses, let's show body parts really tightly up close. These are details that I wouldn't see if I was seeing this dance live. This ad is not doing that. And again, it's referencing these old movies where we're used to seeing the full dancer. It kind of feels like we're there in the apartment with her, which is something we're about to see. Here we go. She realizes, oh, I have control here. It's growing, simple moves, then it's up her body. Now here she goes. We're seeing a total manipulation of space. She now realizes the power she contains. And this is something that's all through the beats in the music and the editing, right? So that the song, the music, the home pod is the thing that's driving her to take these chances and take these risks. So in this gorgeous, stunning moment, we see how the space is really FKA Twigs' partner, right? It's not us, it's the space. This is gonna get exemplified even more fully in just a second with a playful back and forth moment, right here. She hasn't really noticed us, the onlooker, yet. It's all about the space until now. Oh, we're here. We're now her partner, and this camera is now gonna start dancing with her, moving through the space. And that brings us into this next amazing part of this video. Now at the top of her power, drawing us in, right? We're seeing her full body. Everything about the choreography is fully intact. She's dancing with us. We're coming in. We're moving back. And see how this movement itself is really playful. She's taunting us, she's teasing with us. It's a kind of combination of what we might see on a dance floor and someone just dancing around in their living room. This sense of partnership is gonna go from the space to us, to herself, once she discovers this mirror here. Another thing just to point out here, this is clearly a real set. This is not CGI. It's unbelievable, oh, I feel like only a brand like Apple would take this probably giant warehouse and build this tiny little apartment in it that it could explode and move and change. Love this shot. This is the first moment of kind of darkness and shadow that we've seen since the opening of the dance. So as she's dancing with herself here, you kind of feel like, is this her dancing with Apple, right? With the technology, Apple's telling us, hey, you live inside the machine, it's you, it's personal. It's all about that connection, right? It's effortless, it's easy as just being yourself. Even when FKA Twigs then does this funky little tap step, her partner is saying, oh, you don't need those formal steps here, just do what you would normally do. That twirls her and twirls her out, and then she lands back at home, feeling at ease, of course the HomePod, the last shot of the video, because it's the thing that generated all of this wonder and magic. So to sum everything up, we've talked about a lot of different elements today. We've talked about how to set up a dance really well and how Ryan Heffington starts with stillness and then slow, normal human movements into some bigger, fun dance, free moves. We've also talked about being able to see FK Twigs' full body and how that connects us back to the history of musical cinema. And we've also talked about this idea of the double and the partner, first being the space, then it's us with the camera, and then it's herself. And maybe that's a stand-in for the Apple device itself, all landing us 
back at home. Again, I think this is a stunning advertisement and a great example of Apple just making good art and, hap and it happening to be an ad. <laughs> As I said at the top though, there is one thing I'm not happy with. And that is that Ryan Heffington, the amazing accomplished choreographer whose work you may most recognize from all of Sia's videos, he's the man behind Chandelier and all those amazing things with Maddie Ziegler. Ryan Heffington is not credited in the video. He's not credited in the description. His name is really nowhere to be found. Spike Jones, his name is everywhere. Spike Jones is a more of a household name. This lack of credit to choreographers is something that I see very often and really gets to me. I think we can all agree from watching this video that this video would not exist if a choreographer wasn't a part of the team, right? It is vital that this is a dance driven advertisement. And I think you can see that before we even started talking today. And so it doesn't really make any sense to me that we're not educating the audience on, hey, this is the person who made this. Dance doesn't just come out of thin air. This happens here. It happens with award shows, the people who make the amazing performances. We always say, oh my God, Beyonce. Oh my God, Rihanna. What an amazing performance. Those were all created by choreographers. Same goes with music videos. To be clear, this is not about like, oh, you should know who I am. You should know these people's names. It's about education. I am really passionate about what dance can do in stories. You know, dance steps and moves and gestures all have really specific meaning and come from a lot of hard work and research over often months, years. This is one of the main reasons I started this YouTube channel because I want to take people into my process and to help educate people on what it's like to make dance driven Art. So the next time you're scrolling through Instagram and see a dance video or watch a music video on YouTube or maybe see a dance film, I hope you bring a new set of eyes to that piece and are able to see something maybe you didn't see before. If you liked this video and want to see more content like it on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. Maybe you can tell me an ad or a music video you want me to break down. Be sure to give it a thumbs up as well and subscribe for more videos like this as well as a look into my process of being a director and choreographer here in New York City. All right, until next time.